All right, you cybernauts, we are back. Uh, cybernauts, cryptonauts. Anyway, today's video, hey, let's uh, go over a motherboard, uh, see what features I found in my motherboard I like, and what I picked for both GPU mining, CPU mining, and just building a pretty powerful computer. This board right here, what we will show you, is this one. For some reason, I really latched onto these MSI motherboards. Uh, there's, of course, other brands, Asus and all these other ones out there. I picked MSI. The X470 Gaming Plus Max. There is now an X570. They put a little fan down in here and stuff. I don't know. They, I have one, but I really like the X470. At the time, they were not expensive. AM4 socket on them. And they, uh, they had a lot of uh, these slots, PCI, PCI slots for graphics cards or the graphics extenders if you're doing um, uh, GPU mining. So uh, first lesson is, what do you want to run on it? Boom. So I am going to run AMD Ryzen's on it. So then, of course, you got to make sure you have the right socketing you know, on it, the right uh, CPU socket. And this one is an AMD Ryzen. I think this is a 5, an older one, but it works, right? For a mining rig, it was perfect. I didn't really need much CPU computational power to run a GPU rig. Just boot it up and blammo, the GPUs had all the power built on board. GPUs are their own computers. Uh, let's see. Let's open this puppy up. Some of the highlights. Always save your boxes. Pro tip number one. Always save your boxes. Just don't throw crap out. Throw it in a closet. You will be thankful later. Yeah, especially um, if you want to find out what's on the box. Like this stuff is kind of helpful sometimes. Uh, if you want to resell it, boom, in the box. Easy win. All right, this one has a DDR4 boost on it. Steel armor. Slot strength. That is actually very good, this right here. Just because these things are plastic. You know, the whole thing's plastic, right? Come on. Uh, but this is nice. It reinforces if you have a big GPU. And if you're a gaming guy, and I see why they did this, because this is a gaming motherboard built for gaming. And uh, it's just extra strength for when that uh, GPU is sitting in there. Those puppies, the 3080 Ti, are massive, man. It's just the, the stress on this uh, PCI slot is... Uh, Pretty strong, even when you, I mean, just installing it and moving around. As a rig, too, they're kind of loosey-goosey in here. Uh, but in a, in a case, they are kind of screwed down. But anyway, this is nice they did that. All right, some of the stuff, you can go through here. I'll just let you guys, blammo, you guys get it. Save your boxes. Why? Number one reason, throw your manuals in the box. That way, everything is in one spot. This is, your, this is your Bible, baby. You need this if you want to learn about this crap. Mainly the jumpers. What do I mean by jumpers? The pins. Like, how do I know? This is a little speaker plug-in. Because I need to hear the bell or the beeps. How did I know this was the speaker jumper? I went to the manual. And even on the motherboard, you can kind of see the jumper setting right. Where's my little stick? I got my little pointer. Today it's pointer day, class day. Right here, you got the jumper number, the label. And then sometimes, this one doesn't. Sometimes they, they're JFPD2. This one is JF Papa 2. And on some motherboards, they put like a PWR for a power. Stuff like that. So anyway, that's why you want the... Um, you want the manuals to help with the jumper settings. Otherwise, you'll be on the freaking internet looking for your motherboard and finding all the specs. You can go to the site. Obviously, sometimes they have it. This is gold. Most motherboards don't even put this on there. This is nice so you know if you forget, this is your label on the motherboard. All right, let's go on. Where's the manual? I just lost it. Oh, man. Anyway, what else do we get? You get your uh, nice little wrapper here if you ever, again, want to sell it. And you get stuff. If I'm ever going to put this in a case, you get the cover. You get some other stuff. I don't know. Some goodies. Ooh, some labels. See, I didn't know. This is years old now. My God. Thank you for choosing MSI. You're welcome. I like your products. Keep up the great work. Ooh. 
you get little little whatever little screws Ooh. and what is this what is it pray tell could this be case standoff notification all right oh this is something this is an msi quick installation oh this shows you how to do the cpu hey i mean most people know right but if you're new to this this stuff is gold because some uh each motherboard and cpu are different with the way you install uh, not all installed the same this one definitely has the screws in you screw down on first you lock in the cpu like that with a little arm you got to make sure the pins are in and the pins are not bent if this one has a pin one i can't remember or is it some don't have the pins i think the intel's have the pins i can't remember the amd's kind of just sit flush and you just got to make sure the corner's in the right spot it shows you the jumper the afp1 for the leds shows you your memory good stuff man that's why i say keep the box there you go and then this one has that bracket this one has the bracket right there that snaps it's kind of wonky when you do it i mean you're afraid you, you think you're going to put too much stress on it that is the thermal paste you put on before you put on the heat sink and then making sure you got all this stuff you want to remove those temporary brackets right on the side there all right, let's rock. So anyway, my point point here is keep your boxes and uh, keep your manuals. And let's go right to why. Because again, I didn't know this stuff. Sometimes you want to clear the CMOS. How do you do that? I think this one's over here. This one's a fan. Here it is. Oh my God, this one's actually labeled. See it? They put a button. So in put a, some motherboards have a jumper. You just have to short the jumper. Or if you want to clear the CMOS, if you totally wonked it up in the BIOS settings, you can just pop out the battery for like five to 10 minutes, pop it back in. You need a graphics card in here when you boot up so you can get into the BIOS. It's gonna ask you before it gets to the BIOS, hey, this is a new, you know, you, do you wanna set this up now? Because you pretty much whacked everything back to default. But if you wanna reset it, here is uh, right here, CMOS, clear CLR CMOS, clear CMOS, boom, you can push that little button. It'll clear it. Like I said, some you just you can short it out with a piece of a metal, a screwdriver, connect two pins. It'll it'll uh, reset it as well. So this is gold, knowing what all these jumpers are. Some are just USBs right here for plugging into if you're uh, if you're uh, what do you call it? heat sink or a fan has LEDs on it. You want to be uh, really cool. You can plug in the USBs here. And there's another one over here, RGB, right here. This one is the uh, CPU CPU fan as well, uh, that, which actually plugs in here. There's two of them. One, two. Here's this one plugged in. This one's not as fancy. It only has <clears throat> one plug. All right. All right, let's go on. Uh, I dropped my pointer. I know, that's what she said. There we go. Let's... Um, I mean, this stuff's gold, guys. I know people don't read the manual. RTFM. Just read the freaking manual when you're getting set up. Uh, I'm trying to find the jump. I, I just think the jumper things was gold in these books. Because sometimes when you buy a computer, you don't really muck with the crap. You just want to get it up and running. But when you're doing mining and all this stuff, here we go. Overview of components. Shows you all the jumpers right here. There's your SATA plugs. There's your jumpers right here. I mean, they're all over the board, but mostly they're located here. But you got some, like I said, there and there. And then there's a pump fan, sys fan. Your power supply, your sys fan, your SATA drives. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had no idea you could have up to six SATA drives. That's amazing. Or devices. All right, let's go down. Shows you where to put the memory, the PCI slots. Um... The type of PCI is important too. We got the PCI right there. There's the connector. It goes through the connectors right there. The power connector. Parallel port connector. Your SATA connectors. All your slots. Gives you all the information. The pin readouts and stuff. Very powerful. CPU power. Panel connectors. 
Here is the resetting the BIOS I talked about. Clear CMOS. See that? Look at that. You thought I was lying. You thought I was lying. It even tells you about the bum, 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 the BIOS menu when it comes up, when you boot up. How to flash. Because you may want to update the BIOS on your motherboard. Uh, because your motherboard was sitting on the shelf for a while. You can always go to the <coughs> MSI support page for your device, for your hardware, and they will have the latest drivers. Flashing is a piece of cake. Just download it and you uh, place it on a, um, on a uh, memory stick, and then you just go into that flash BIOS setting. And then you have the memory stick in there. When it reboots, it reads the file you selected and upgrades it. You do not want to kill power during the upgrade. You will, you will, you will foobar your whole thing. There's your memory, your memory layout. You want to know what channels to put your memory sticks in, like right there. The slots. All right, there's your PCIe, your graphics cards. Again, your jumper settings, your port setting, or pin settings. Uh, I'm trying to find... These are all the different set. Yeah, here we go. CPU fan, the plugs, JFP1, clear CMOT, all this stuff. This is in German now. Why am I in German? What is going on here? Oh my God, I went too far. So you can learn different languages as well as you go through this. Anyway, yeah, here's all your, here's all the goodies on this puppy. You will use a lot of those USB ports and the HDMI port. It's amazing how fast they fill up when you're uh, when you're uh, troubleshooting and installing stuff. I'm trying to find there's the expansion slots we went through that. M2 power fan fan clear seam we did that one we did that one resetting BIOS. Yeah, it goes through all this stuff. All right, now it gets in German. Keep your, bo keep your boxes in your manuals. There, that was the life lesson. Let's run through it real quick here. Where's my little pointer? All right. CPU power from your um, power supply comes here. CPU power supply hooks into this, hooks into your drive. If you have a SATA drive, you plug one of the cables into your SATA drives, and you got your two CPU powers each motherboard is different which how much power it, it draws i usually do fill up both of these from your power supply you should have the right connectors it'll say cpu on it here's your uh memory channels four of them on this puppy and of course there's your pump fan your sys fan sys fan sata connectors and the good stuff like i said here's the little beeper the little sound thing plugged into the right jumper and when I start this boy up on JFP1, I can actually short these two out. If I don't have a switch plugged into this, you can just short these two pins out with a paper clip or a screwdriver. Just touch them together at the same time. Burn, short it out. You're basically connecting those two by touching the end of a screwdriver. And then, boom, it'll start right up. Careful not to touch anything else. You might throw a spark. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Uh, there's that. We're going around here. Now, these things are cool. Let's turn this. Show and tell. These are the nice slots here. You can put in a card, and that can be your SATA drive as well. Your your uh, your drive with your Windows on it, and uh, that is cool. I'll show you that in a second. I like these setups where you don't have an ex a, a SATA drive dongling hanging off the cables here, like a Kingston, you know, one of those square ones, 120 gig. <clears throat> you can actually get the sticks. It looks like a piece of memory, but you plug it into here. And then you honker it down, you screw it down here. And then it's it's underneath any PCIe card you have here. It's just tucked right in there. Right it's a nice low form factor installation. I like those things a lot. And if I was still building systems, I would use those everywhere. Um, yeah, it just makes it clean and compact. And they work fine. And having said that, let's zip over there and show you. Ignore my mess. Whee. This is what I'm talking about right here. See that card? And there's the card for reference. Take a picture. Boom. So 120 gigabytes. That or you can, in lieu of buying these, these things. See what I mean? Hanging. Hanging free like that. 
off the SATA cable. This this is gold. I think I only have one or two of these, but I, I once I figure these things out, and you get a little adapter, a USB adapter to connect into this when you're um there's a there's a device you plug this into, and then that adapter plugs into your Windows, so then you can flash this and install Windows 10 installation on it. So when this initially boots up the first time, you'll have Windows 10 in my case as um, the default installation you run through. It's cool. I love these a lot. These are neat. All right. Uh, this is an X570 for reference. But again, same slot. And there's the jumper. Let me show you the... I don't have one here. Shoot. Oh, here's the jumpers. See how I plug that in for power? But I could short those two out right there if I, you know, I do with this little screwdriver to start them up if I don't have a switch plugged in and all the switch is is that old school baby old school all right, let's go back here let's show the uh the borg the cube assimilate now pretty cool now my only problem with my setup here is zip ties i don't know the shear strength if these go there goes an expensive piece of hardware on the ground well yeah, it might not get, it might get broken because the power supply might just catch it in time. Now, if that falls on top of the motherboard, it's over, Johnny. All right. But I like to live dangerous. All right. <laughs> so this is cool. Looking at that card, I think that's a win for making a nice clean systems. Uh, over here, we have, like I said, the AMD 5. I'm going to turn this. I don't use, all right, hold on a sec. <clears throat> AMD 5, and you can see this one, if you can see that with the light screws in. These are four screws into the motherboard. Boom, there's the fan plug right there. And just look at this. There's the, there's the bottom. There's the bottom, and I have those red brackets. Those are... For mounting onto one of those baker trays, I have those baker racks. It just would mount onto those one of the rails and keep, obviously, the metal parts from touching the metal, which would not be good for anything. It would short it out. For reference, this motherboard, this X470 with this AMD5, wee. let's watch this for a second. People always love this. It's like ASMR. All right, enough of that. This was my motherboard, which ran six <clears throat> 3080 Ti's. But you're going, Crypto Jim, but Crypto Jim, how did you get six 3080 Ti's, those big puppies, into this little motherboard? Well, basically, you get extenders. You plug these little PCIe extenders, which are a size of that, you know, small. And then they have USB cables coming out of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. And those USB cables excuse me, man, are running to a PCIe card externally where the actual GPU is mounted. And I had made a little wood rack. You can look at a very old video I did where I made a little out of, a wood GPU rack out of two by twos, which um, had all my GPUs on it. And some of these 30As were hot, ran hot. I would just have them hanging out in open air. Uh, yeah. The secret to GPUs, if they're running hot, get the copper shim mod, you have to pop the bottom off. Uh, the thermal pads do not work on some of those GPUs, and the way they installed them are crap from the factory. They didn't center them, they're not covering the memory completely, blah, 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 blah. And uh, in short, they just run hot. But uh, putting copper shim on it, and you can cut your own copper shim, just get a little piece of copper plate, and then cut out what you need, and you use a Dremel to cut it, or some cutters, some, uh, what do you call it, tin snips or something. But you can buy it too for freaking 40 bucks, but how much is your time worth and how much you want to invest in getting a cold GPU, whether for gaming or mining pro tip. I'm giving all my secrets away. Copper shims, uh, thermal paste, thermal pad. You need thermal paste for the actual CPU to, um, heat sink contact, but the copper paste <clears throat> is to cover the surrounding memory on the GPU. Not this, not the motherboard, the GPU I'm talking about, not this puppy, this puppy, you need thermal paste, splam, once you seat the CPU in the saddle, lock her down, 
put the fan on before you put the fan on you <clears throat> you covered in um, thermal paste screw this puppy down you are good to go copper shims are for protecting the memory heat wise around the gpu processor and you'll see the little squares all around the processor but on the processor itself on the gpu you still need thermal paste so always think cpu always think processor you need the paste but the memory around it is what gets hot from the heat of the card and you need to put copper shims you can make them yourself like i said or buy them uh let's see what else we got we got the pcies like i said i had the dongles hanging out of them the the, the extenders uh, all the jumpers again we talked about the clear cmos all right let's flip this around And these little fancy things, I mean, they're not just for uh, style. These are heat sinks. Just, I mean, they're just to help dissipate the heat from the board. They look cool, but they help dissipate the heat. And your heat's coming out of this as well, your heat sink under here, right? Now for the business end, the old, what is that? I don't know, that's a oh, DVI adapter display. They don't make VGA ones anymore. But this is a DVI adapter, DBI, DVI, D, Delta, Victor, Indy. Uh, I don't use this one. Those are old. USB, 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 USB. Oh, my God. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Yeah. Eight. Ocho. HDMI, of course. You need that puppy. Again, you can set up the motherboard with AMD <clears throat> to run without a graphics card. How do you do that? You got to go in the BIOS. It's a catch 22. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because how are you going to get in the BIOS and see the BIOS screen without a mother uh, graphics card? Blah, blah, blah. So you can pop in a, uh, any graphics card, run your HDMI off the graphics card, boot this, boot this puppy up, go into BIOS, go into advanced mode on MSI, advanced mode on MSI, go into integrated graphics and there's going to think it says detect vga you say nah never don't detect it because it'll try to detect it and it won't boot up because it's looking for a freaking card so you say never save your little your settings let it reset or shut it down um or la leave the card in either way you basically <clears throat> you can reset it it'll boot up then without the card but you can just save your settings shut it down pull the card off and it'll then boot up but then you're going, Crypto Jim, but Crypto Jim, how can I get into the machine if I don't have a graphics card and see what's going on? Oh, my God. All right, what you do is uh, hopefully you have your Ethernet right here. Don't need Wi-Fi. Don't use Wi-Fi for rigs or gaming. You want you want that Cat6 or whatever plugged in there, baby. You want all the performance you can get, and cable is the way to go. Wired. You want wired. Don't use Wi-Fi. That Wi-Fi will fry you anyway. So just use wired for performance. Now, once it's wired... Uh, you can do is you re re use remote desktop. So the use case, let's correct this, is you're initially booting up. You have a graphics card in here with an HDMI cable. You come into the BIOS. You go into advanced setting. You go into integrated graphics. Uh, there's a setting for that. And then what you say is detect VGA. Never. Boom. Save your settings. Restart. Leave the graphics card in for now. It's going to reboot. It's going to come up into whatever you have on your SATA drive, whether your drive is here or on the SATA dongle cable. Mine is Windows 10. It's going to come up. Bam, bam. You install, you know, get Windows 10 all set up. You're still running off the VGA card. And you are pretty much good to go. So you set all that up. And uh, once you get all that set up, you're all happy. You got the, you don't need this one. You're not using this HDMI. And then once you get all that set up, you, you can basically pretty much shut it back down, re, uh, remove the card. But before, once you're in Windows 10, what I was going to say, once you, once you have that installed, you're all happy with your settings. I install Google's remote desktop. That's where I was going with that. So you can't get into it yet. Right. There's a catch. Even though I don't care, I have a graphics card and I want to run headless, you need to come up and you want, need a way to get into your machine remotely. So you have your CAT6 plugged in, your network set up, boom. Uh, you have your graphics card jet, and you want to go and download and install Google Remote Desktop, make this thing accessible from your network, and then name it whatever you want, you know, Crypto Jim's Rig, <laughs> whatever. 
And once you're happy with that, man, shut the PC down. Blammo, pull this card out, the G, uh, GPU. Boot back up. All right, you got the bells and whistles, fans are spinning, but how do I know I can get to it? Then on your remote desktop from your other workstation, you, can, you will see it, and then you can just log in. And uh, at the time you set this up, <clears throat> on this box, you set a pin. You'll get in past the pin, and bam, you can then remote display the thing. Sometimes the, dis the display may be low resolution. I have another video on that, how to make it. You run a batch script with a driver, and it makes it so you can do the high-resolution display using Google Remote Desktop. Ah, that's a lot to say. But it's doable. It's not that hard. The hardest part was finding the stuff to install to make it all pretty good. You know, how did I know to use Google Remote Desktop? Well, I just ran across it by searching for ways to remote into a thing. How do I know to fix the display when it comes up remotely and it's like 640 by 480 and I can't see anything? It's just very small. Well, then you, I looked and said, okay, download these drivers and point to these drivers, run this bat script, and boom, your display is fixed. And you can set it to high resolution. Uh, that's it. Anyway, we are 26 minutes into a motherboard walkthrough. Oh, boy. These things are cool. I mean, these things are durable. I mean, the amount of abuse I put these motherboards through and the amount of times I fried the CMOS, or fried, reset the CMOS because my, my uh, GPUs weren't all be detected. I would only get three. You'd have to go into the freaking BIOS and tweak some stuff so it recognized the rest of the three slots. Uh, then you could recognize up to six GPUs per motherboard, which is optimal. And the funny thing is, I had a really old 2014 or earlier computer I built and it had an Asus old mother motherboard on it. My God, that thing worked fine right out of the box with six GPUs. I didn't have to tweak anything in the BIOS. Blammo. This one I had to go in and say, set up some stuff. I can't remember exactly what the settings were, but to recognize six of these and said it would only recognize like three. I was like, oh my God, it's not picking up the other ones. And that was trial and error. I have a video out there on that as well. You just got to go dig for it. All right, let's see. These are cool for your audio. Hope that's right. Uh, what else? Mounting wise, you can see there's the hole. I have a screw in it for that red bracket right here. See that? All right. One, two, three. These are your mounting holes. Uh, where in the heck is the other one? Right here is this one. <laughs> oh, it's right here. I got a screw in it. Duh, I couldn't see it. So there's the two for the other red bracket. Yeah, and that's where I'm hanging the racks from. I put zip ties through it and they're hanging vertically. Anyway, that is all I got. I just wanted to run through. We talk about motherboards and CPU rigs, both GPU rigs and CPU rigs, but no one, you know, most people don't ever go through the motherboard. That's a that's an essential item. And you can run, like I said, an old motherboard for your rig. You don't need to have the latest and greatest and spend a lot of money. And I would advise of spending lots of money unless you want to treat it as a hobby because hobbies aren't really there to make you money. Uh, treat it as a hobby and you know, have fun with this. This will improve your tech skills. It will, trust me. The more you do with this, like me just babbling about this crap. If you're looking for a job in tech, my God, what a great entryway, gateway to learning the uh, all the three facets of uh, the engineering world. System admin, like I said, from installing your Windows, OS, it could be Linux, whatever, whatever floats your boat, uh, to, you know, setting up accounts, setting, like the stuff I said, uh, setting the uh, remote display option to log in, setting the, the drivers to fix the um, display resolution issue. Those are all system admin type jobs. Uh, that's one facet. Number two is system engineering piecing together this whole thing. How do I know this is the right CPU for the job I need that to tackle? Do I need more juice? Is it the right form factor? The right pin layout to run on this motherboard? What memory do I need? Right now, I took all the memory out. I kind of sat this. What sort of scavenged this to work on the CPU rigs? I wanted memory, two memory slots on all my CPU rigs. So I took all these from all my uh, GPU motherboards, but I still like my motherboards. Uh, yeah, how do you know which memory, which speeds on the memory to put in here, and uh, which slots and all that stuff. Uh, also, system manager, what is the best drive to use, at, say, uh, SDD drive? Do you want to dongle it and that, and what size do you need, and how, what GPUs work with this? What's a good engineering solution? What is the best performance? Can I run these? Do I just want to run run, or do I want to run six, but then I have a problem? How do I engineer the problem? And the problem, you know, the solution there is, 
PCIe extenders, blam, 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 you plug them in with USB cables hanging off, and then you can mount your GPUs elsewhere. So all that stuff, what else? Uh, power supply is another issue for engineering. How much power is this card going to draw, this motherboard and the cards, and uh, buy accordingly, and then buy the uh, appropriate grade bronze, gold power supply for durability. All that stuff. And also, you know, your network solution, blammo. Cat six, whatever the latest cat is, you want it wired. Never, no, just don't use Wi-Fi. If you don't have to use Wi-Fi for your devices, don't. You'll get better performance out of a hard wired internet. Trust me. When you're playing Call of Duty, you want to be the first with the, you. You want to be wired. <laughs> and when you're mining too, you want performance. You know, you want to keep that network speed up as well. Not that it's killing your network, but. There's a lot of uh, communication going back and forth. All right, let's see. Yeah, so you got the three facets. Oh, the third one is software engineering. Once you come up, when you start mining, you're gonna be, you're gonna deal with that. Ah, you are going to be dealing with software, mining software packages. If you're not gonna, even if you're doing nice hash or Hive OS, there's two levels there. You can just use their easy download app and run it, or uh, yeah. Or you can use their OS, their Hive OS, or NiceHash OS, which is uh, basically their, their operating system f uh, flashed on a memory stick. And you put that memory stick in here, it boots up in that OS. And then, so there you're learning more system admin crap as well. Programming wise, you may want to just run like me on Windows. And there's batch files you configure, you tweak, you can make your own scripts in Python or batch. And uh, they're basically controlling the miner, the settings, the pool settings. Um, <clears throat> the URLs, your wallet address, a whole stuff of configuring. And a lot of that is in there as a software engineer. How, you, how are you going to organize the software, uh, code it if you want to actually go further or understand the mining software, you can actually dig into it because most of their stuff is on, on the GitHub and you can look at it. So it touches all three facets of the uh, engineering world. And Blamo, you can talk to this crap just as a normal person, you don't need a freaking piece of paper wasting four years in college with some guy teaching you who's never done anything in his life, never built anything, never really worked in the real world, and uh, pretty much um, people that can't teach, right? And it's so true, in the, especially in the tech world. The guys just don't know anything, and uh, you're better off just learning by hands-on yourself, breaking stuff, learning from your, your errors, uh, and you will do better. A lot of companies don't even care if you have a piece of paper because a lot of kids get out of school now. They can't do anything. They just took a, a, a idea, ideology studies, and it's like, wait, you went for engineering, but I know, I, I know how a computer identifies itself. Oh, my God. All right, we're, no, I'm going to hire Crypto Jim over here because Crypto Jim just ripped apart a bunch of rigs, scavenged parts, built these rigs first, and now he's running CPU rigs from his old GPU rigs. Hey, get this guy in here. How much you want, Crypto Jim? I want at least $250,000. And he's going to say, yes, sir. And I want a, uh, a cyber truck. And they're going to say, yes, sir. And then I'm going to get the Tesla cyber truck and my 250 k working remotely. And I'm going to be working harder than any of these people that got out of MIT who were really just pulling all their crappy woke stuff and causing trouble in the office. And I'm going to be home making the company wealthy. They're going to make me wealthy. And we're going to do well together. And that is the bottom line. All right. I'm out, guys. Hope this helps. I'm going to get on a rant. All right. 33 minutes. This is 33 minutes you will never get back. And I'm sorry about that. But I thought this was fun to do. Uh, there you go. Take that. This is a motherboard porn. And it's the best kind of porn. Well, maybe not. But anyway, hope that you found uh, yeah. English hard for me. I did go to public school. I hope you find or found. Oh my God, I'm falling apart. I'm, I'm falling apart. Maybe don't hire me. I, I think I just lost my cyber truck. All right. I hope you found this useful. And uh, yeah, if you need more information on this stuff or you want to build a rig, let me know. I have no problem ripping this puppy apart. Um, I just don't have no memory. I got, I, yeah, I do. I do have memory. I could just do it for show. But uh, we can build a rig if you want. It's not that exciting. But if you have any trouble in it, we can always go through it together. All right. Love the community. Uh, any suggestions, I appreciate it. And if I help anyone, hey, buy me a coffee, man. I appreciate it. Take care. I'm out. 35. Let's go to 35 minutes. Hold on. We're almost there. So how you guys doing? Getting ready for Christmas? All right. Don't spend too much. 
Remember, experiences are more important than things. So have a dinner with your parents, your friends. That's more important. All right, I'm out.